Hello and welcome back to the MFX module series, a collection of useful Houdini mini setups for those who want to get their knowledge on. As always, support is much appreciated. Please like, subscribe, and check the video description for links to relevant project files. Module 3 will cover the pseudo-infection because I don't know what else to call it, but we're going to use an attribute diffusion to spread an attribute across a piece of geometry, creating a growth or infection-like falloff that can make some really cool organic effects. So pop open a copy of Houdini and let's get in there and figure this out. So basically a lot of infection systems involve using like a particle system and then detecting if a nearby particle is infected and then you become infected and it runs uh, over and over every frame. And I find that like it makes a very cool simulation, but the concepts behind it are a little bit hard to sort out sometimes, especially if you're like newer to Houdini and the logic there just can be a little bit confusing. So what we're going to do is build off of the previous example that we we're working on where we built this wet map and we're just going to make it so that this wet map can expand a little bit. So I'm going to switch over to just adding a singular point here instead of using this sphere animation that we have here. So I'm going to throw it on a point. So we're going to hit an add node and I'm going to add a single point at the origin and wire that into the mask instead. And here you can see that it is creating that point for us in the middle. I'm just going to go back to frame zero and click play. And you can see that we're just transferring this mask more or less. Since there's no movement, it's not really making a trail. Now our goal is to make this mask expand a little bit. So I'm going to dive inside the solver and let's see if we can figure out how to do that. First thing I'm going to do is maybe decrease the amount, uh, the distance of this attribute transfer. So I'm going to bring the blend width down to be something a lot smaller. Looks like I'm going to use a value of, uh, let's try 0.8 or sorry, 0.08 here. And I'll just remove the distance threshold to zero. Then the next thing I want to do is actually just blur this out. So if we blur the mask attribute, it will cause it to spread out a little bit. So I'm going to zoom in on this point. You can see this is where our mask is right now. And by default, this attribute blur is working on position. We want to have it work on the mask attribute instead. So I'm going to type in mask here. And you can see that it kind of spreads out that mask a little bit. If I toggle this on and off, you can see that mask spreads out. Now, if we were to go up here and click play, you could see that it would spread out and it continues to blur, but it doesn't really seem like it's expanding in a predictable way. So the way that we can actually control this expansion is by just supplying a little bit of contrast. So here, what I would do is just add a simple wrangle. This is my favorite way of remapping an attribute. I know that we have attribute remap, but I have found similar to mask from geometry that attribute remap is a little bit heavy and it can be, uh, it can make things run a little bit slow when there's a time dependency in there. Inside the attribute remap, there's basically a wrangle that's doing the same thing. It's just, we're going to take the mask attribute and we're going to pipe it through a ramp. So ch ramp, we'll call the ramp ramp again, and we're going to be ma um, ramping the mask attribute. And if I click this little button and you can see we got a ramp here, I'm going to just crank out a little bit of contrast on there. So I'm just bringing the top end of that ramp down a little bit. And now if we hop out of our solver and click play, you can see that that mask is now spreading uh, across our geometry in a somewhat predictable way. Now we can actually control the speed of this by, you know, increasing this contrast and it should expand much faster. So you can see it expanding a little bit faster there. Let's bring this way down. You can see it uh, expanding a little bit further. We could actually increase the amount of blurring and that should cause it to increase even faster. You can see it increasing faster like that. Cool. So I'm going to bring this attribute blur back down to a value of one and let's just put the contrast somewhere right here. Let's say 0 0.75, 75 percent. And you can see that um, it's just kind of spreading across our geometry. Ooh, I'm going to let this play out to the end real quick. Here you can see that once it gets to the end, it doesn't fully blur out these edges. And that's because on our attribute blur here, we have pin border points. So I'm going to untick that. And if we let it play a little bit further, you can see that it's allowing that mask to fully convert over those points on the edge. So we have this really cool spread here and it works really awesome with animated geometry. So what I'm going to do is let's throw down a curve 
We're just going to draw a curve and use that to animate a nice little trail that goes across this. So I'm going to switch to my top view by hitting spacebar two, and I'm going to select my manipulator, select my curve, and I'll just draw a nice little zigzaggy thing across my geometry like that. Hit enter. And then here I'm going to resample the curve and let's give it, I'll do actually um, maximum segments mode. If we give it 50, no, let's give it 500. It's just a lot of points and then we're going to carve them. So let's go through here and add a carve. And I'll just feed the carve into the mask and we're going to animate, let's see. Why am I not seeing that move? It's because this thing is selected. Okay, I think that I'm having a viewport issue. So I'm gonna go to the labs reset viewport and let's try carving again. There we can see it's carving correctly. So I'm gonna tick on second U and bring this second U down to zero. And on frame one, I will uh, set a keyframe by alt clicking second U and then we'll bring it up to frame 96 and bring second U all the way up to one, like so. And so now, because this is going into the mask, it should create a nice trail for us across our solver. I'm gonna flip back, hit spacebar one to flip back to my perspective view and turn off the point display and let's check it out. You can see as that, as that curve carves across our geometry, it leaves this nice kind of wake behind it, which is kind of a cool looking transition. I'll use this in a future tutorial for sure. Now, one of the coolest things about the attribute blur node that we have here is that there is this weight attribute we can apply, which basically means that we can feed in some attribute that's going to mask off how effective this blurring is allowed to be on our geometry. So we, if we do that now, it's going to create a more organic kind of growth shape. So I'll demonstrate that. I'm just going to switch back to using this add node. I'm just going to delete these. We don't need those right now. I'm just going to switch back to using this add node so that we have this sort of circular growth out from the middle. And then we're going to throw down an attribute noise. So attribute noise node. I'll just wire this in after the remesh and we'll select it. And you can see it's giving us a color noise. I just want to switch this to a float noise and we'll call that noise noise like this. I'm just going to hit the info key here and turn that noise on so we can visualize what that noise is. Um, so we have our noise. I'm just going to jump into the solver and we're going to put this into this weight attribute. So we're going to type in noise here. And if I go back up and let's just highlight our mask now and click play, you can see that our growth still looks pretty circular, but after a while it starts to take on this more blobby like shape here. And we can actually force the influence of this blobby shape by tweaking around with some of the uh, contrast in our noise. So let's just switch back to the noise. And then I'm going to switch the visualizer to the noise so we can see the contrast that we're adding here. I'm going to go and enable the remap ramp here and then just bring these two notches closer together like so. So now if I go back to frame one and select our solver, switch over to visualizing the mask and click play. You can see that our diffusion here has is kind of working its way through that noise and it's not really allowed to uh, blur these areas that have been completely masked off. Now, if we want this infection to fully envelop everything eventually, we want the minimum amount of smoothing weight to be something above zero. So in this example, if we go back and look at our noise here, these dark purple areas are zero. So it's not going to allow it to blur out the attribute at all when it gets to that point. Full blurring happening during the red areas, but the purple areas don't have any blurring at all. So we can go back to our attribute noise and just uh, change the range of our values to be between a min and max. And our minimum value, I'm just going to pipe in a 0.01 here. So we're just above zero here. Not quite zero, just above zero. And if we go back to our solver, go back to frame zero and switch, right clicking here, switching to our mask mode, we can see our infection now. And you can see that it is 
meeting resistance around these edges, but it's allowed to kind of curl back on itself and eventually will fill in all these gaps. So I thought that this was a really cool and easy to understand way of doing an infection like spreading of an attribute without actually having to go through and make a big particle system and look at neighbors and all that stuff. So hopefully you thought this was uh, interesting. I will have this project file, a link to this project file in the description of this video. Uh, so go check that out if you want to tinker a little bit further. But uh, yeah, so that is it for the pseudo infection module. And uh, keep this one in your back pocket and we will look at some more examples that use something like this in the future.